So I was taking a walk the other day, out and about, minding my business, doing my thing. And I get a whole bunch of beeps from my Twitter notifications. I don't call it X, but from my Twitter notifications, right? And it comes from the Twitter account of Jordan Schultz at Schultz Report. Y'all go check it out. But I'm sure if you're heavy in the Twitter streets, then you've probably run across this. And if you go on that particular post and you scroll down, you're going to see a whole bunch of Ayo Vach. What you think of this offensive line situation here? And the tweet reads this. Uh, here's a fun one. The best kept secret in the NFL draft. Best kept secret. We'll talk about this later. But here's a Tongan offensive tackle named Giovanni Manu who checks in at a freakish. Uh, he's, he's six foot uh, seven, 352 pounds. Manu ran a four, nine, six at his pro day, which featured half the league in attendance. He also verted a 33 0.5 inches. Manu just concluded his 30 visit with the Cowboys. His 30 visit with the Cowboys is 30 visit. With our beloved Dallas Cowboys, he played football at the University of British Columbia. British Columbia, British Columbia. And has six 30 visits on the docket as of now at it's your boy geo that is his twitter handle and if you kind of click on these pictures uh take a look at the fella he does seem like a big old human okay and, and you just kind of got to ask yourself okay because you know i like to put two and two together i like to put my thinking cap on to try to figure things out why am i just now hearing from this player is one thing that kind of popped out for me why is he not on my preliminary list of of people that i need to be watching on my big board and who the hell played football at the university of british columbia i didn't know that all these things came together so same right so i you know people people tag me in to come and be o-line dude and, and listen i'm not the only o-line dude out here but i do uh take a great deal of pride when people come and ask me o-line questions okay now we're gonna attack this a couple of different ways brother geo we're just gonna call him geo because i don't want to call him giovanni Manu the whole time right but brother geo uh does indeed have a little bit of uh you know t all 22 cut-ups on the youtube machine okay i'll be playing this while i'll be talking over him, okay and we we have to be careful we have to be careful about these two minute highlights the these short highlight videos that just kind of you know pop up randomly on somebody's youtube we have to be wary we 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 have to keep our eyes open you know because highlight tapes in in general can be a bit treacherous you know if, we, if you go back a couple of drafts ago um our guy Nitang moody Right, he's uh, he ended up being drafted by the Broncos. He put out a highlight tape on his YouTube channel. Okay, this was his own at his YouTube channel, and people from PFF called it film. And they was like, "Yeah, we watch film, and Nitain Moody got some of the best guard film that we've ever seen in our life." And I'm so glad that y'all had enough faith to tap in with Brother Vach, and I was able to call nonsense on that whole Nitain Moody uh, situation. Right, so this is the same kind of situation that we get with Brother Gio Manu. Okay, uh, you know, he has, uh, uh, you know, these short films, these short highlight tapes that are on the uh, YouTube and the Twitter machine, and they will make him look like an all pro when he runs this 496 allegedly at his pro day in this 33.5 inch vertical at six foot big as hell, 300 and huge pounds, right? You know, you, you, you ask the question to yourself, why haven't we heard of this character? Why haven't we put him up there with the other offensive tackles that are in this draft? in terms of measurables okay well in real life and man i don't want to sound like a hater when i say this man but but bro play at university of british columbia okay we had to take that with a with a with a grain of salt the, actually the the first thing i said was i don't want to be phony here because i know he's a cowboy 30 visit and you know the cowboys are probably going to look at him as an undrafted free agent type guy and the cowboys get busy in undrafted free agency because they just kind of throw money at these dudes right they don't mind throwing around uh big dollar amounts if you look at the cowboys highest spent undrafted free agent numbers from last year it was uh hunter Lippy and uh tj bass and those and those two were in the top three of highest paid undrafted free agent characters right even if you look at you know um guys like um darrell johnson from liberty that's another situation right uh just a well-built character and he's got the measurables but he played at liberty you know what i'm saying but what darrell johnson was at the time was a low risk probably undrafted free agent type character high high upside type of dude that's exactly what i think this situation with brother giovanni manu is he is a very uh freakish looking athlete he has all these top tier measurables 
the film, once you get past the highlight film that's put out on YouTube and you start to look at these games for real, I'll be rolling some game film at this point. You could just be looking up here. Once you really get a good idea of his game film and you compare him to the rest of the offensive linemen in this draft, you'll look at him and go, all right, dog, like, okay. You, you gotta they fight. Half the league is here. Half the league. But I understand the whole designation of a of a thirty visit. You're bringing them in to get a closer look. I I don't hate the Cowboys for that, you know. But but what this feels like is one of those Isaac Alacon situation. Isaac Alacon, right? It, it, it seems like one of those situations, right? Like he he comes in here and he got a long time to kind of figure this thing out, right? So the first things first. Is people are going to ask me, well, Vach, is he good? And my response is, you would rather have Chuma Adoga playing. I don't think that's a big knock. Chuma Adoga is a veteran. He's played games last year. Chuma Adoga's even played fine last year, okay? Chuma Adoga just don't know the plays, and he, you know, gets people hurt. But if our guy, Gio Manu, who's totally not ready to play NFL football right now, if he were to uh, step in and be a swing tackle type character, swing guard type character, because some of this film that I'm showing you today is some of his guard film, if he was to step in and do any of that kind of stuff you know somebody may get killed at an even faster rate okay um but the 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 biggest issue that that i have and not even issue right but just the the biggest thing on the film that i noticed if you like the same thing i said with kieran amadillajad is not his name let me see if i could attempt to say it uh pronounce it properly here kieran amegadigie from yale right the biggest thing about him from from kieran is you're playing at yale Okay, so if you end up whooping on the Harvard kids or whooping on the Holy Cross kids, all right, fine. Those dudes are going to be lawyers and mortgage loan processors. You know what I'm saying? They're not really going to be playing football for you. So, Karen, I really need to see you stand out against those guys. The 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 difference between Karen and Gio is the competition that Gio is playing will get smoked by the Harvard kids. They'll get smoked by the Holy Cross and they'll get smoked by the Monmouth children, okay? That's just what it is. And if they're drastically worse than the Harvard kids, I need Geo to put hands and feet all over those kids. Feet, I tell you. But if you watch his film, it's a it's a lot of miscellaneous technique that's not very sharp. It's a lot of sloppy footwork. It's a lot of crossing of your feet. It's a lot of dropping of your post foot. It's a lot of low hands. It's a it's a lot of irregular hand placement. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's it's gonna take a whole bunch. Duke Mannyweather can't do this by himself. It's gonna take a village to raise this child. Uh, but. If he were to come in under your undrafted free agent program and you were signed, you sign him to an undrafted free agent contract, then he kind of just gets to sit around the Cowboys facility. He gets to train. He gets to lift weights and be a big freakish athlete and just learn technique on the fly. He got two years to do it. Then he, then he becomes a restricted free agent, which basically he gets a free year to just kind of hang around and just learn. So, uh, you know, if you're going to be a, a ceiling guy, and I don't even know what his ceiling is because he really doesn't have a great grasp of what NFL footwork and hand placement looks like right now. Uh, but he's humongous, and he looks great, and he has this uh, pretty fast 40 to be 350 pounds and 6'7", so that's impressive. So he's going to be looked at as a character that, hey, maybe we can turn him into something. But just as of now, uh, you know, just like Isaac Alicone ended up playing one tech at the end of his football career. I see this guy playing. Um, all right, I don't. But I appreciate y'all, man. You know, he is a 30 visit and he is somebody that we should be keeping eyes on because if the Cowboys have them as a 30 visit, that means that they are somewhat interested. But just me watching the film and, and, and look, the 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 film that I'm showing you, like the grainy looking film that I'm showing you, that's the film that I found. And that's not a highlight tape. That's just him being a player. And, you know, with that. I think that's more healthy than just having a highlight tape because now you get to look at him and be like, all right, well, this is what his bad plays look like. And even his good plays look bad, but his bad plays look horrific. But, hey, that's what it's for. He's supposed to be a, a project type player. It's going to take him a while to get there, but at least we ain't count on him to play today. All right. Uh, y'all hold down for the dose. You're welcome, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. This is a film session. Go tap in with the other ones. Watch the Brian Broaddus film session. Duke Manny Weather and David Hellman are on the way on the channel. All right. Watch those videos too. Salute.